The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Ion Oshkosh. I'm your host Cheryl Hentz. And uh, on this edition, we're gonna be talking about a couple of different um, social type events or issues. In the first segment, we're going to be discussing uh, the poverty in the area and what's being done to help people in the Oshkosh area fill the gap. And that fill the gap should have air quotes around it because that is the name of a type of program here. So we're going to hear all about that tonight. And then later on in the show, we'll talk about a sex trafficking. I don't want to call it an event necessarily, but it is an event where a sex trafficking speaker will be coming in to talk about her experiences. So uh, in this first segment then, we welcome to the show Deb Martin, who has been here many different times about a lot of different things. Deb is very involved in things here in the community and she is here tonight to talk about both issues. So we welcome her to the show. <laughs> and uh, the first time here for Pastor Connie Weiss, yes. you are with Christ Lutheran Church mm -hmm. in Oshkosh. Where is that? Well, we used to be on Church Avenue across from... Um, across from the, where we're filming. Where we're filming actually right now. Um, and we downsized and moved our church into the Hooper Community Center over on Broad Street. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. How long have you been over there? Since uh, April 1st. Marvelous. Yeah. And that's yeah. working out for you. It is. I tell you, we are more effective in being involved in our community that way versus worrying about our building and the roof leaking and all these other issues that buildings tend to do. Yeah, insurance and all that other all stuff. All that stuff. The upkeep. All that stuff. Yeah. Yep. Well, very good. Uh, so fine. Let's let's talk about the definition of poverty, or at least what it used to be. I don't know if it's the same definition now as it once was, but certainly it affects a lot more people now. And um, I guess whoever wants to take that question can take it. Uh, we were also going to have a social worker here from the uh, Salvation Army, uh, but he cannot be here. But we do need to credit him, mm -hmm. by the way, because mm -hmm. he's put Absolutely. together a training program called the Culture of, Prover of Poverty. Culture of Poverty. And since he's not here, maybe that would be a good place to start. Hmm. Go ahead, Connie. Well, I'll, I'll tell you um, from my point of view, when especially when we were on Church Avenue, any, any church um, tends to see um, street traffic coming in of people coming to a church looking for help. And um, I've known Deb for quite a few years, and she is with, affiliated with another church. And one day, she and I were discussing uh, the issue of what, how do you respond to those in need? And what qualifies somebody to be in need? I mean, it's, it's one thing, you just don't want to just trust that um, um, they're not. You want to you wanna take care of them. So the thing was, we weren't all on the same page as far as knowing the resources and and what to do and we were all doing different things and so as we were talking we wanted to become as people of faith more empowered to help in realistic ways and and as we got together we started a first workshop in a, a year ago wanting to know more about hub the hub yes. Oshkosh and so we got about 15 different congregations together just to bring everybody together in conversation and find out what this this it's not an organization, but what this project was about and what, what this service is about. And as we started doing that, we began to understand, oh my goodness, 
um, we have so much to learn. And one of those people we learned from was Al Ralph. Mm -hmm. He is a social worker you, you talked about. We asked Al, because he said he had a training program on the culture of poverty, if we could host him doing that. And so we, we, we started doing that with church people, people on the front lines from secretaries to pastors, um, people interested in social justice issues. And that has taken off. And what we realized is instead of um, you know, figuring out programs or where those gaps are, first of all, we needed to educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're learning. Sure. We're, we're learning through statistics. We're learning about you know, people like Deb who brings so many um, issues to the surface and you know, other people in our community. What does constitute poverty? And, and we learn from the statistics. And so I am not the pro in that. I am learning myself. But what I'm learning about is how to look differently at those in need um, and also how to um, respond more effectively. I, I would just, I want to sure. add to that. And I would say, so I've been a, a social justice advocate for over 30 years. And I started out learning about hunger in the United States and worldwide. And I had good ideas and ways to help people, but what Al's program, The Culture of Poverty, has done is help me understand from my middle class view, when I tell someone in poverty this is something they should do, that may not, even though I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing, that may not be the right thing. Mm -hmm. So educating ourselves, those of us that want to do good, has it, it, been helpful and a real eye-opener of some of it works and some of it needs to be adjusted based on mm -hmm. what tr what truly will work better. To be, mm -hmm. again, we want to be effective. Everyone has, we have limited time, limited money. What what ways can, can we be best? Sure. And I think it's important, too, to recognize that just because someone has a need or needs at one point in their lives does not mean right. that they've had that need before. Um, because we, we all have heard of and maybe even seen generational poverty. Right. You know, but just because someone is in poverty or deemed to be in poverty, in po why do I want to keep adding an R to that? Poverty does not mean that they were or necessarily mm -hmm. will be in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. might just be going through something temporary. Mm -hmm. For example, they've lost their job. And, you know, that doesn't mean that they're going to be out of work for the rest of their lives. That just means it's a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. But those temporary problems can be so very significant. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we know in Oshkosh that 41% of the children in our school system are, are on free and reduced lunch. It's one indicator of poverty. So about half of the children in our city and there's 10,000 students in the public school system. So that gives us one indicator that there really is true need. Mm -hmm. I, again, don't know tons of statistics myself. But the one thing, not only are we educating ourselves and providing these workshops because Al does such a great job with it, and what it's doing is connecting us with our community. Mm -hmm. Not only are we connecting with uh, um, people in the faith community, local agencies. So as we come together, we're enriched by the dialogue we're having. And all of a sudden, somebody from um, the health department attends, the, the, you know, the school system attends, and we're talking with each other. And so he's teaching us about the culture of poverty with those in generational poverty. So that is one thing that is really helping us and educating us. But uh, also, we are looking at filling those gaps. How, how, how can we lift up those things that are not being addressed mm -hmm. and especially the faith community we were thinking how can we not repeat what's being done out there so by getting to know the local agencies and 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 the school system and all all, all of even these other the, things uh, the police officer the, the liaison yes. yeah. to the to the to the community has come to our meetings too and okay. give us some insights and Right. Into what's going on. And, and we've also done mini drives, like little campaigns. There's a need. All of a sudden, a United Way is doing a, a diaper drive. Well, we'll promote it. So we started promoting things. We started a Facebook page, a Fill the Gap Oshkosh. Um, and we also have a network of churches and people that are connect, connected through emails. We're sending church bulletins and flyers. So people can say, hey, there's a campaign going on, support it. Or um, Deb mentioned this this bike community bike program. All of a sudden, we're putting that out there. Mm -hmm. So we're finding um, we can be empowered as the faith community to to reach out to those in that 
in that demographic to help those in need. Not that we have to solve it, but we are kind of like helping build awareness. So, sure. So we know a lot of our, our schools, uh, our churches collect money, f our food for the f food pantries in mm -hmm. Oshkosh. Well, Al, let us know that one of the things pantries need are can openers. Pe they, we give a lot of food in cans. Well, people need openers for those cans. So we did a drive to, this, yep. to the churches and said, also ask for can openers. Besides diapers and Lent, we asked for uh, churches to do a drive for paper goods for mm -hmm. the pantries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, you've brought up a few things, Connie, that I, I want to talk about individually here. Um, let's talk about fill the gap first. Yes. And you indicated that they can go on Facebook, and it's mm -hmm. Fill the Gap Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you would access their information. And so how was Fill the Gap started? Did Al start it? No. Or did you all <laughs> no. kind of started Three it? Three of us. A... Um, uh, um, Terry Sosnowski is our third wheel um, okay. of this original group. And so Deb and, and Teresa are connected. And they started talking on their own about those in need, of course, because Deb is so well connected with the needs of this community. At the same time, Deb and I were, we, they were at my church at the time we were hosting a women's conference. And I, and I was on a uh, one-year grant to build up um, the awareness in my um, church on how to be more missional. And I said, you know, I just don't know enough about what's available. And she's like, me too. And I said, you know what, maybe we should focus on helping our ch local churches and people in the faith community, all sorts of faith, um, you know, persuasions and, and denominations, um, help come together and find out what they know mm -hmm. and, and so we can move forward as a stronger community. Sure. I, I said, let's educate ourselves. And so we, the three of us started getting together and we hosted that first one in March uh, of last year introducing the faith community to Habashkash. We just want to empower ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you time and time again how empowered I am now when somebody comes to me in need. I really kind of um, can and have a more intelligent conversation with them and say, hey, um, have you ever s sat down with a counselor to to work out this and that? And, you know, there are so many resources available that now I'm aware of. Sure. So we hosted this, and that's when we met Al, because he is one of many speakers. We had people from AdvoCap, United Way, we had Salvation Army. And so we hosted this open dialogue and the church leaders and secretaries, whoever came to this, they were on fire. Mm -hmm. They were like, you're giving us something, we real meat and potatoes sure. of helping people. And so with that, we said, gee, Al, this culture of poverty thing sounds really interesting. And so we hosted it at um, Christ Lutheran and then now at the community center we host this. And people are amazed at what they're learning. Sure. So we, you've mentioned the hub a couple of times. So let's let's talk about that uh, because that I think has been around for a little while, and I'm not sure exactly who started that. I know mm -hmm. that I, I think Sue Ponick, when she was still with the United Way, started the 411. Um, the two one two one one two one one. Yes, mm -hmm. I wrote yes. down four one one. I don't know why I'm. Well, thinking it, of it's that. a thing too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, two one one is a thing yeah. too. Yeah. And I know that at our church, for example, um, because we're also downtown mm -hmm. and we do have a lot of that downtown traffic, mm -hmm. but you don't always have all the funds that someone might need, or you may not have whatever they may need. And so our church refers them to 211. Mm -hmm. And I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, outside our door, uh, we, we also have a mailbox you do. that it's has nice. the 211 things mm -hmm. in it. Yep. And so uh, we do tend to refer people to that. But let's, let's talk about the hub. And we have information that we can put up on the screen, how to access the hub and so forth. Um, it also has the email address for Fill the Gap, and it has the Facebook information Thank for you. Fill the Gap Thank also. You. There it is right now mm -hmm. on your screen. And if you are hearing this on the radio, uh, you would go to Facebook and then search for Fill the Gap dot Oshkosh. Uh, I'm sorry, Fill the Gap Oshkosh. And you can also just go to, on the internet, hubashkosh.org, or if you want to email them, you can go to fillthegaposhkosh at gmail.com. And we will be putting that up again throughout the show. And for those on the radio, I will repeat it again before this segment ends. So let's talk about the hub. 
What is the hub? What does it do? How do people access okay. it? Okay. Well, it is not an organization. It is not organized that way. And we're learning it is a work in progress. Okay. So it is not, a, it is not an entity <coughs> within itself. But what it is, is uh, there, are, there are coaches who have gone through the process of sitting down with people in need and, knowing, and, and walking alongside of them and helping them find the right, um, the right resources. So Al Rolf with the Salvation Army is a hub coach, and that's out of the Salvation Army. There are people out of um, Advocap that are trained to do the same thing. So they are still kind of finding their way in this process. Mm -hmm. But what we've learned is how valuable that is, that we can, you can go online, I don't know if always you can, you can find it online and refer somebody for coaching. So I, re I met somebody who came to me in need and he kept coming back to me in need. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm learning. This, there's a pattern here. This person is always in crisis. It's something we learn about. But not only that, is he being walked alongside of with somebody who is uh, like a social worker, somebody who has access to the right information, somebody who's trained to have these conversations, right? And that's what somebody like Al or another coach can do. And so that's when I can say, hey, have you ever heard of um, the hub coaching system? I mean, somebody can actually sit down with you and work alongside with you. It's your budget, it's, it's these medical bills, whatever. Mm -hmm. So two on one is nice to call and say, hey, um, I'm gonna you know, lose my electricity, who do I call or whatever, that's fine. But for somebody who has a, a, a barrage of things and just needs to help kind of sift through their life, mm -hmm. This is how it is, is, in, is working. And so I appreciate, I mean, we kind of learned through Al how valuable this coaching system is. Sure, and so it's really, it's teaching people whether it takes a month because it's a temporary thing or a year or longer. Essentially, it's teaching people to be more self-sufficient mm -hmm. uh, on their own as opposed to constantly needing a handout. It's giving them a hand up rather than a handout, as the expression goes, I right. guess, right? Right. Um, and or, the encouragement. And the encouragement right, for right. it. Like you're not alone. I'm I'm walking beside you. Right. Or like in the Bible, <laughs> instead of just giving someone fish, you, you teach, teach them, them to fish Absolutely. and then they'll always have food. Well then you're giving the person the dignity that they deserve. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's what they're trained in too. They, re they really understand um, what it means to be in crisis and can approach them um, where they're at. Sure. So when we think about fill the need, um, what are some of the needs that you're seeing in this community? Um, whether they be a common denominator amongst a lot of people, mm -hmm. or some of the more unique things that someone might have. Let's talk about the more common ones first. Well, one of the things I got interested in a couple years ago has to do with transportation. Because mm. a real barrier for people to get jobs is getting to work. Not everyone owns a car, and our right. society is based on everyone having a car. Yeah. So the bus system in Oshkosh runs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you have a job that runs till 8, 9, or 10 o'clock at night, you don't have a way to get home. Or maybe or you're a third to, shifter. Or a third shift. You don't have a commute either way. So the other a uh, couple weeks ago, I went to the bus station in downtown and thought, I should talk to a few people that take the bus. Well, the riders were very, they're very friendly and were very open to, to talking with me. I said, mm -hmm. I'm just a person. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to be able to help them. But they said they really have to plan their day, and sometimes they have to get on even two or three buses to get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And they always have to know, six o'clock, I need, to, you know, I have to be on a bus by then to get back home. I hadn't really even thought about the. It can take hours to get things done, and they talk about uh, Walmart moved their bus stop from next to the building to the street. Mm -hmm. Now they they call that the walk of shame because they have to walk through the Walmart parking lot, which is very long. Even if, even on not rainy or snowy days, it's a long walk and dangerous parking lot. So one of the ways I found that people are addressing that issue is bikes. There's uh, Steve Sagmeister mm -hmm. here in Oshkosh has been repairing bikes for since 2010. Mm -hmm. It gives away about 400 a year, but he ran out of bikes. 
So one of our projects on Fill the Gap was to share that with the churches and the wider community. We got an article in the Herald, too, to talk about the need for bikes. Would people donate to him? And then he needs money for um, parts. So we asked the yeah. school district. So that kind of thing. So let me just interrupt for one moment here. Mm -hmm. um, Steve has actually been on the show. Oh, nice. and not recently, but yeah. some time ago. Because yeah. yeah. as you said, Deb, he's been involved in this for a while. Um, so he's been on the show talking about it. But So I have some information for folks on the community bike program. It is uh, Steve Sagmeister, as Deb said. And you can reach him on Wednesdays. And I'm going to say this slow in case you're writing it down. Wednesdays between 9.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Again, Wednesdays between 9.30 a. and 3.30 p. Steve's phone number is 920-688-2356. Again, 688-2356. So if you have bikes that maybe are just getting dusty sitting in your garage or in a shed and you're not using them, you don't anticipate using them this summer, what's left of it, this is already the first of August, I can't believe that, <laughs> uh, you know, contact Steve and consider donating them. Or if you don't want to contact Steve, you can take them to the, um, I just Sheriff. lost my place here, the Sheriff or Sheriff. Sheriff Clothing and Resource Center located at 307 North Sawyer. So that's in that block where there's Titan Shell, there's uh, an uh, Image 360 is on the other corner. Family Dollar? There's a the Family dollars. Dollar in there um, and Peace, uh, not Peace, um, there's a church. Zion. Zion. Zion Lutheran, thank you. I, I could picture it and I, mm -hmm. I couldn't think of the name of it that's sort of kitty corner and across the street so a very easy to find the place but it's 307 North Sawyer anytime it, yes anytime they're open yeah mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. that they're open and but Steve is from that 930 to 330 on Wednesdays now uh, they also besides bikes they can use locks they can use helmets and as Deb had also mentioned, money to make repairs, because Steve's not loaded with money. Who of us is? <laughs> so those are just some, some ways that you can help to fill the gap with the need for bikes and so forth. So what, what other things have you found? The transportation, by the way, um, we do have, I forget what it's called, but it's a bus that goes between Oshkosh and the Fox Valley, yeah. like Nina Manasha. Mm -hmm. Do either of you know what hours that runs? I am not. I'm aware of it, but it's I been a while since I've... Only once or twice a day. It's not okay. often. Yeah, it's uh, That's all I know. I, I, okay. I don't know yet. No. But we do have another system related to transportation. Sure. I'm, I'm a volunteer driver for... It's called Catch-A-Ride. Hmm. And it's a, it's a beginning group that for people that need a ride to work or from work. So, for instance, I give a, a guy a ride sometimes who can get to work on the bus, but he works later in the evening till 8, 9, or 10, and so then he needs someone to give him a ride home. So I can go on to on, an online system and take the, the times that I'm available. I don't have to take all the rides. I can just go in and say, I can do Tuesday and Friday or whatever it happens to be. Okay. And then other people are doing the same thing. So people get referred to this through an agency like... Um, maybe Advocap or, or one of the other social agencies, and then people like me have volunteered. I had to go in and show them my, they had to inspect my car, see my driver's license, look at my insurance. Sure. And, and probably do some a background check yeah. also. you got to yeah. be careful in this day and age. Everyone. Not only who you're getting a ride from, mm -hmm. but right. who you're picking up yeah. as a driver. Yeah. So, so it's, a really, yeah. it's a really pretty simple thing. But it, all, so these little pieces, it never addresses everything, but the more we can help, um, more things will come up. Sure, absolutely. So catch a ride. Called catch a ride. So if you have a little extra time and you've got a good driving record, uh, a car and uh, that runs, <laughs> yeah, and um, are insured as a driver, and your car's insured, um, contact Salvation it, Army or fill, Advocate. Fill the, fill the gap. We can get them okay, to the right place. Okay, so you can go to fill the gap again on Facebook. So, um, what other needs are you finding in the community? Well, I, I really think uh, we're talking housing is huge, and, you know, it's bigger than big. 
Sure. But the the nice thing is we're even connecting with people from Habitat, Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I sat in on one of the housing coalition meetings just to get a, an idea of what's going on um, in the city. We talk about um, also just the food issue and, and the, the diapers, you know, size five, six diapers are always not on the shelves. They're always in great demand. Sure. Okay. So we learn about these things, but I th and when we sat down with... Um, um, with the gal from the schools, Julie yeah, Dumke. Julie Dumke with the mm -hmm. school system. It's been on my heart about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and so Julie's been working on this as well. So we know that different, not every school needs the same thing. This is children in the school. Sure. But we know that some schools, for instance, tennis shoes. A child needs tennis shoes for gym class. They have to be separate. If they don't have them, they can't participate. Mm -hmm. So I asked, uh, my, my husband was a fire teacher. So that triggered something for me. And there are schools where there's a shortage of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that people could donate shoes. There's other times they need snacks. This spring mm -hmm. we, did a, we did, a, did a drive and said to the ch churches, please donate some snacks for kids at school. They, they get lunches, but they still need a snack. Sure. It's a long, long day for the young ones. And we collected the police off our police officer Kate Mann. Kate Mann had told us mm -hmm. about that need, mm -hmm. so we asked the churches to support that. So we're working with Julie to come up with a list, and then we plan to put it out to the churches. This school needs these certain things, mm -hmm. and then a church could decide, well, mm -hmm. we'll support, we'll talk to that principal or that social worker there, and, and um, our people can meet some of, some of the need. Sure. So kids have, they might need snow pants, or they can't go out for recess mm -hmm. in the winter, okay. or boots, that kind of thing. All right. And I'm going to say one other thing here, too, because um, anyone who watches this show on a regular basis or who knows me knows that I am very involved with animal rescue, mm -hmm. dog rescue, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Quite often when people fall into a state of poverty, whether it's, it, it, typically it's, uh, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing, hopefully, mm -hmm. where they've lost their job or whatever, but a lot of times, local shelters and rescue groups will see dogs, in particular, being surrendered because they mm -hmm. don't have money. They're, they don't have the money, they feel, to feed their dog and also their, their children. And, of course, they're going to choose their children. Uh, but they don't have to surrender the animal. The Oshkosh Area Humane Society has a program there where if you are in need of feeding your pets... Uh, you know, please go there and let them know what your need is. And I'm very mm -hmm. proud to say that uh, through my church, we run an animal ministry program, and I'm the facilitator of that program. And we do things throughout the year to gather up items that the shelter needs. And one of those items, of course, is the ongoing need for food mm -hmm. for either dogs or cats. Mm -hmm. So if you are in a situation where you can't afford to feed them, you're not wanting to give them up because they are family members, go to the Oshkosh Area Humane Society and let them know, and they will be very happy to help you. And there's some information for you guys that's also. Awesome. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Um, that. Because that's not something that you can necessarily get from the food pantry. Right. And you don't, hear, you don't think of that. Right. You know, there, yeah. there are those gaps. That's what, yeah. what, that's what we started saying. Where are those gaps? People just are taking it for granted and not even realizing. You know, we're, we're, we're addressing the big things, but where are those things that are just being um, passed by every mm -hmm. day that um, are, can really make a huge difference for somebody um, in sure. need? Yeah. And when and you're in stressful situations, you don't want to give up your pet. I was just going to say yeah. that, Deb, because <laughs> that pet provides comfort yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, emotional comfort, and, and that's a, that's a proven mm -hmm. fact. Mm -hmm. So, you don't. You're right. You don't want to give up your pets. So, with time running somewhat short, we've probably got about four or five minutes left. Um, what are some other community needs that we can address? I do want to mention. You talked about the habitat thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's they've they've had a workshop. By the time this ends, mm -hmm. that workshop, mm -hmm. or by the time this airs the workshop will have been over. However, that being said, they are taking applications up until September 15th for Habitat for Humanity Oshkosh, and the requirements are you must live or work in the city of Oshkosh at the time that you make application. Uh, I'm sure that there are some other program requirements, but you can go online for Advocap 
uh, not advocate. I'm getting, I'm getting all these well, things there mixed are, up here. That's good <laughs> that there are many out there. <laughs> that is, but not so mm. good that I am getting them mixed up. Mm. Um, but you can go online for Habitat for Humanity Oshkosh and find out all the particulars. It's a wonderful program. But, you know, Habitat, as wonderful work as they do, they can only build so many houses. We need affordable housing. Well, we need transitional housing, too. And, okay. and that's, I'm not an expert. Let's talk about that. I'm not an expert on any of this. But so when I, when I mention something, it's just like I am in the midst of learning about it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm coming to understand is there are those people um, that are um, leaving life situations and they cannot afford you know, what is being charged for rent or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a great need even for transitional housing. And even Habitat is like, that is a very interesting thing. I wonder, you know, how we can get involved or, you know. So we're all talking together about yeah. the different things. And one of them is transitional housing or, or more affordable housing. Yeah. It's just not affordable in, out there. Right. In the Herald this last week, there was an article that said 1,800 people are on the waiting list for low-income housing. That it was an article about me. women in poverty right. in Oshkosh. Right. Right. Well, Sorry. and that brings up another point. Um, you know, we need more landlords, uh, independent or ones who own larger properties, you know, apartment buildings. Uh, we need them to become Section 8 landlords. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a great mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, they'll mm -hmm. do an inspection of your property to make sure that it's safe and sound, but you're guaranteed rent. How many landlords can say that when they're just renting to John Doe or Jane Smith? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully there's no John Doe or Jane Smith out there. <laughs> but I think people know what I mean. Mm. You're guaranteed your rent every month, mm. and that is a wonderful thing. And for the renter, uh, you can get housing for very little or zero dollars out of your pocket each month. Mm -hmm. So we need landlords, more landlords to become Section 8 housing providers, I think. And you know, and sometimes for people, it's just they need money for, for the down payment for uh, an apartment. Mm -hmm. Like you have to have your security deposit and maybe mm -hmm. they don't have that much money. Mm -hmm. Or somebody needs mm -hmm. money for a car repair. Mm -hmm. And that's a difference mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. being able to eat or not. So, yeah. so we're still working on how, they'll come to a church about that, but we don't have a, funds to help that yet, but there's an awareness that it's not always you need big chunks, but these little pieces, you just don't have a savings account for it. Yeah. How, can, how can we as mm -hmm. churches or people in the community right. help people get over that hurdle? Okay, excellent. Um, we're going to have to take a break here, and then, Deb, you're going to stay with me, and we're going to yeah. talk about another topic that mm -hmm. is of great social concern. Uh, but I just want to give those... Um, that information again on the website and the email address. So it is Fill the Gap Oshkosh. When you go to Facebook, go to Facebook and type in Fill the Gap Oshkosh. Or you can go to hubashkosh.org. Or if you want to email them for more information at Fill the Gap, um, you can go to Fill the Gap Oshkosh at gmail.com. If you're interested in the bike program, you can contact Steve Sagmeister uh, at 920-688-2356. And if you have books, books, bikes, <laughs> this is not my evening, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then maybe Steve would like books, too. Who knows? Uh, you can go to... There's a need for books, so, but we haven't need. addressed it yet. <laughs> I could probably help you with that. Um, if you have bikes that you're not going to be using, helmets, locks, money to help foot the repair bills on bikes that Steve is fixing up, any of that would be graciously accepted uh, at Cherith Clothing and Resource Center located at 307 North Sawyer Street. And if you have questions about any of this, you can contact me at ayanashkash at gmail.com. So with that said, thank you both very much. Thank you. Deb, you're staying. Reverend Connie, yep. thank you so much for oh, being here. good to be here. Love to thank have you. you back again sometime. You were a great guest. Oh, thanks for having me. So with that, we're going to take a short break, and we will be back to talk about sex trafficking. It's not a charity. It's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. 
It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? Oh no, did I miss the exit? Hey pal, you look a little lost. What? You know your smartphone has GPS, don't you? Yeah, but I'm driving right now. Let's text your sister to see if she's texting. Okay, look, I'll help. I've got a map. Okay. I am done with this distraction. Not my hair dryer. Hey, no! Ah, that's distracting. Okay, okay, I'll go. Focus on driving, not the distractor. Find me a new driver. Get lost. Welcome back to the second segment of Ayan Oshkosh. I continue to be your host, Cheryl Hans. Deb Martin continues to be our concerned citizen and um, social advocate. Um, you are involved in so many things in this community. I can't even begin to, to tell you. Um, I don't have to tell you, but I don't have to begin to tell you folks. And joining us now, we're very pleased to welcome to the program Pam Henkel. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. It's a real pleasure. We're going to be talking about uh, sex trafficking, and that's a topic that we have covered multiple times on this show. In fact, just a few months ago, we, we talked with uh, Lisa Senholz from Damascus Road, and it was a wonderful program. She always does a good job. But I think it's a topic that is such a social concern that it can't be talked about enough. And so Pam and uh, uh, Deb are going to be talking about a little bit about sex trafficking, but there is an event coming up in September that they really want to talk a lot about tonight to try and get as many folks in attendance at this event as possible. So now, Deb, you're part of the planning, uh, yeah, the the planning group for this, mm -hmm. and you're going to be doing a presentation, I think? I'll be doing introductions. I won't be introductions. Actually, yeah. Okay. And, and Pam is in the planning group, too. Okay, and mm -hmm. you're also in the planning group. Mm -hmm. But y you, as I understand, um, have had a lot of experience here. You've been a foster mom. Yes. You were a teacher, yes. and you've been a foster mom for over 30 years. Yes. Is that right? Yep. So this, you probably have some very good firsthand knowledge about sex trafficking and how it impacts not just youth, but their families, other friends, and so forth. Can you show or talk to us a little bit about what some of your experiences have been? The, the children don't just get over this after they're in a good home or gone from the situation. I have a couple children that are in their 30s now and they're still having uh, night terrors and they, they're socially not able to fit in very good. And the families weren't very supportive of it. A lot of times now families are finding a way to sell their children for their drugs and alcohol and Sadly, I've heard stories like that on the news. I don't know that we've had any right here in the Oshkosh area, but certainly we've had those situations in this country. And no matter where it occurs, I don't care what country it's in, um, you got to be a pretty low, I don't even know that you can call them a person, to sell their children for drugs. Um, that's just about the lowest of the low. Uh, as far as I can tell, and it just, I don't know, you go back 30 years with some of these kids and about what percentage of children did you have over the years that had some kind of experience with sex trafficking? 
I, the last few years I had three. I did adopt two of them. Okay. And the, the issues are not ongoing. They're never going to go away mm -hmm. because they still revert back. And sadly enough, some of the children will go back to that lifestyle. At what <laughs> age did they get out of that lifestyle? Um, two of mine were 13. Okay. So. so they got out at 13. How young were they when they got into it? Well, I know one of them was 18 months when it started with that child. 18 months at being sexually abused? Mm-hmm. And then did they, were they trafficked at some point? Yes. Okay. How old were they when they got trafficked? I'm not sure from what they're saying from little on. Okay. And then got out of it at the age of 13. Yes. Wow. I, you know, that just baffles my mind. And it makes me so sad to think that this kind of thing is going on. And again, if it's that young, when we're talking 18 months, that's got to be a parent or sibling or older sibling or other family member who's involved in this sexual abuse, right? Yes, yes it is. Okay. Well, and Cheryl, I heard recently that there are more people alive today on the earth that are trafficked, not just sex, but other kinds of trafficking than any time in the history of the world. So when we talk about other kinds of trafficking, and I, I always have to make this distinction when I'm doing a sex trafficking show because um, trafficking can be sex trafficking, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So talk a little bit, Deb, about those other types of trafficking that can affect people and they can be trafficked into those situations that aren't related to sex trafficking. Yeah, it can be work-related. Mm -hmm. So someone who is brought from another country or not even for that reason could be put into some kind of um, situation where they can't leave, but they're forced to work. might mm -hmm. be cleaning. It might be in an agricultural setting. It could be in some kind of factory. It happens in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and it happens overseas. But So we think it's always some other country, but we just need to know that. Unfortunately, we have bad situations mm -hmm. here, too. Sure. Well, and I think we have some right here in Oshkosh. Um, I did an article, um, I'm trying to think if it was earlier this year or if, I think it was late last year, um, where we've got some Asian massage parlors in the community yes. where the situation, I think, is twofold. You've got women who are providing sex services to men um, not in all cases, but in many, and I heard that directly from the police department. Mm -hmm. And so they're providing sexual services, which they may or may not be trafficked into providing those services. But then they're also being trafficked in the sense that some of these women, I was told by the police, don't even know where they are. Right. They, You could tell them that they're in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and that would be totally foreign to them. They wouldn't know where Oshkosh, Wisconsin is. Right. They're, they're put in vehicles, many times blindfolded usually, the, or trucks, what have you. They don't know where they're being taken to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're brought to a place to work and they don't know where they are. And Oshkosh is right on the, the 41 corridor between mm -hmm. um, Milwaukee and Green Bay, so we know that it's, it's a convenient place to traffic um, particularly for sex and mm -hmm. for other reasons. And Wisconsin has a good interstate system, and that works to our advantage in many cases, but for mm -hmm. this, it's not to our advantage. And the thing is, you mentioned the police, and they, there aren't enough police no. for this. So yeah. that's our, our part. Pam and I feel really strongly on educating the community. Not that we take action, but that we're the eyes mm -hmm. that can then alert the police if we see a situation that looks like it shouldn't really be happening. They do want to be notified, sure. um, and that's that's we want people to be safe and not confront themselves. Mm -hmm. right. but, uh, and you can notify the police anonymously. Yes, yes. You know that's the nice thing. You don't have to, you don't have to give your name or address or phone number or anything like that. You can do it completely anonymously. And as the expression goes, I, we started hearing this expression a few years back, and I think it is so true. If you see something, say something. Right. If you hear something, say something. It doesn't necessarily mean that what you think you heard or saw 
is in fact what is going on, but at least you're giving the police an opportunity to investigate. If you don't say something, they don't even have that opportunity. And wouldn't it be better to err on the side of caution and to say something as opposed to not, and then nothing get done. The other thing that we want to do is make our children safe. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, worked with the school district to for education of our kids, age appropriate education. Mm -hmm. Not us, we're not doing the education, but, but we like to organize and, and to encourage people to get that. So. Mm -hmm to keep children from getting in that situation. So we're pretty happy to, um, to be working on that, which is why we're having this event coming up. Sure. some more education of our people in our community. Sure. And I want to talk about that in just a second. But, you know, we don't have enough police, as you said. Do we have enough social workers or mental health counselors to help these kids? I don't believe and so. And adults deal with what they're dealing with? Yeah. I know. Not I know. I'm sure not. Having worked with, you know, and it is happening in the valley. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have adopted two children that had, been, and I think people see it as a difference when they're doing it. They don't see it as sex trafficking if they're doing it with their children. They, I don't know what they see it as, but, but they don't, you know. So the state of Wisconsin has some laws that we're trying to, we go to Madison and lobby on behalf of laws. One is called Safe Harbor, mm -hmm. and that particular law is so that any child under 18 would not be arrested for a crime of sex trafficking. The person who's perpetrated it mm -hmm. can be arrested because really, mm -hmm. if you have sex with a child under 18, that is a crime in mm -hmm. our state and in, I think, all the country, but for sure in our state. We're also, uh, it's a bipartisan issue in our state, which we're pretty happy about. Yes. There's a couple other bills, too, that we'd like to see passed that uh, education for truck drivers. So over-the-road drivers, a lot of trafficking happens in truck stops. Sure. So when they get their training, for instance, I know Fox Valley Tech does this training on what to look for, what sex trafficking mm -hmm. is, and to make an alert to the police. Well, that bill has not passed both houses of our state legislature yet, so we're working to get that passed. Sure. But well, I'm glad that it's a, uh, <laughs> a nonpartisan issue because mm -hmm. there seem to be so few of those these days. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Let's talk about this event that's coming up. Um, and I just want to say here that the information I received is that Reach Counseling of Nina, Five Stones of Appleton, and four women from Oshkosh, I assume you are that's two of two them. Two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got half the people right here. Um, it doesn't get any better than that. So Reach Counseling of Nina, Five Stones of Appleton, Pam and, <laughs> Pam and Deb, and two others are uh, working together in a partnership to bring to the Fox Valley Teresa Flores. She is a human trafficking survivor, and she will be in Oshkosh and the Fox Valley um, September 13th at, and September 14th. Now, which of those days or evenings will she be in Oshkosh? She will be in Oshkosh Friday the 13th. Okay. And the doors open at 5. She will have a book signing from 5 to 6. And Officer Brandon Ansel will be there from 6 to 6.30 p.m. And then Teresa will do her presentation from 6.30 to 8. Okay. And we'll be at the Reeve Memorial Union Theater 3. And we are, for this event, we're encouraging that no uh, children under 12 should come. Okay. Because she will, it'll, she'll It'll be, be graphic. Graphic information. Okay. Uh, theater 3, yes. you said? Okay. So it's open to anyone yes. who's over the age of 12. 12. 12. Our, and it's free. Free. Okay. Um, and they don't have to get there right at 5. They don't have to be there for the book signing. The presentation itself is from when to when? 6.30 to 8. Well, the Officer Brandon will be 6 to 6.30 and then Teresa 6.30 to 8. Okay. All right. So we, we say that uh, in your material that you sent me said that she's a human trafficking survivor. Yes. Yeah. So I take that to mean then that she was not sexually trafficked in any way? Yes, yes she, she was. was. She was? She was. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why are we not calling her a sex trafficking victim? Well, we could say sex trafficking, yeah. We just, we tend to say human trafficking, but it, we mean sex trafficking. So it was not work-related with her? Oh, no, she, okay. was, she was a, I, I heard her presentation a couple years ago, which is what got me interested in, I had no idea, I feel so naive. 
uh, anyway, Teresa was a teenager in Michigan, and she was trafficked out of her home. Her parents did not even realize it. They, she got tricked at first, because, and uh, they took her at night, and they threatened that they would kill her, her brother if she told anyone, and that they would send pictures of her to her dad's boss. And she believed that, and so it went on for a year and a half. She was mm -hmm. trafficked. And then, How did they get her out of her home? I'm sorry to interrupt, but... They would call her, and she would leave her house. She lived in a big home. They, these were wealthy. This was a wealthy family. Her okay. dad had a very good job. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a lot of space in that house, and she would, go, she would sneak out every night and come back every morning or sometime during the night, and they didn't know she was gone. <laughs> so she was being used as, as a prostitute, yeah. I guess? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sex with many guys around the city, around the area where she lived. She went to school, and nobody noticed that her grades dropped dramatically, that she had bruises on herself, that she would even get pushed around in school, because some of these were just older teenagers mm -hmm. that were part of this gang that was running this. Anyway, she'll tell her whole story, but it, huh. it proves that you don't, it's not just people in poverty that have this yeah. happen. It can be any age, any income bracket can, can get trapped into this. Okay, so again, it's going to be September 13th here in town. Uh, that's a Friday. And, at UWO. Um, at UWO, Reeve Union uh, Theater 3, and it is free. No one under the age of 12, please. Um, do people need to RSVP or anything, or can they just show up? They can register through Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Oh, Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Yep. Okay. It, a conversation about sex trafficking. Okay, and Eventbrite is uh, event, and the word bright, but B-R-I-T-E. Yeah. Here, thank you, I'll read it. Um, oh, I'm not going to read this whole thing. No, <laughs> Eventbrite. It's way too long. Just Eventbrite, and again, it's B-R-I-T-E, eventbrite.com, and then just type in when you get to that website in this little search bar that they probably have, um, sex trafficking tickets or whatever. Uh, do people have to register if they no, don't no. think of it or they forget or whatever? Um, can they just show up? They yes. can. Okay. But you'd prefer to know how many people you're dealing with. Right. Okay. Um, excellent. What are the, I guess, the takeaways that you're hoping people will learn from this event? Uh, because, and I asked that because... You said you were very naive, Deb. Mm -hmm. um, I learn something new every time I have um, someone on the show talking about sex trafficking, and now I've just learned something new tonight, you know, from you, Pam. So thank you for enlightening me uh, and the audience too on some of these some of these issues. It's, it, it, I just sometimes I have no words for what this is or does to people. And it must, now in this case, how did the family react? I mean, I, I know you want her oh. to tell her story, but when they finally learned that their daughter was... They didn't learn then. Her dad got promoted and moved out of the city, and the people didn't know, so she got away. And she didn't tell her family until many years later. When she was not being trafficked right. any longer. Right. So what was their response then? Uh, they, they were, I mean, they were shocked. They yeah. just had no idea. I, you know, I, I think that's the amazing part of it is that, uh, you know, trafficking someone doesn't necessarily mean, it can, but it doesn't necessarily mean that someone evil swoops in and spirits you away undercover at night you know, again, it can be that way, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Yeah. You can be back in the morning as, as Teresa was. Yeah, and, and you can pretend everything's fine when it's not. Yeah, and I would assume that people who are the trafficking victims don't share it with anybody because they're told not to, that some kind of grave harm will come to them or a family member. Um, but there's also a, a stigma, I think, of shame mm -hmm. attached to this. Mm -hmm. um, you've got two children that you adopted who have been through this. What do they talk to you about, um, about Pam? Just the embarrassment of it and the fear that 
they'll be in that situation again or that the people, I know one of them, some of the guys did get in prison and they'll worry, well, what if they get out of prison? And Well, and that's, um, that's I think, a valid concern. And certainly, um, you know, in our prison system, unless you've committed murder, chances are you have an opportunity for parole. Yeah. And so that, too, like I said, is, is a very valid concern. But what we really want from the people that come to know is to just have a better idea of what they're seeing and, and to report something. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the best chance for, for kids is that other kids know and see that their friend is doing things that seem out of character. Uh, the best thing um, is, is if we see something that looks odd, we want people to notify the police or at least ask someone else or contact if teachers see something to contact administration or social workers mm -hmm. and feel empowered that oh the reason that looked odd is it probably was and maybe we'll save we want our children to be safe in Oshkosh sure. we can't save everyone but we can protect the our people around here sure and believe it and <clears throat> believe it believe, believe it. the children and I mean when Deb and I presented this a couple years ago before our other event some of the ladies at church said oh but it doesn't happen in Oshkosh Mm. So just listen and pay attention. That's yeah. Wake up and and smell what's going on and look at what's going on. Um, you mentioned uh, counselors at school. Do um, teachers or counselors under the law in Wisconsin have a duty to report? I know they do if they suspect physical abuse. Do they have a duty to report if they sense that this is going on? Yes. They do? That, yes. Okay. You have to report anything that's a danger to the child. Okay. And this is some type yeah. of abuse. Yes. But so. they may not know. I mean, because, right. again, they may right. or may not they have been trained well. themselves. Sure. The, the teachers. Yeah. So, But if they become aware of it, yeah. then they do mm -hmm. have a duty to report. And I think that that's, that's a very good thing. So, again, um, we just want to uh, reiterate the dates uh, by the way, if they can't make it to the one on Friday the 13th, where is it going to be held in uh, the Fox Valley? It's at Fox Valley Tech, the DJ Bordini Center. Oh, sure. Okay. And, and that opens, at, the doors open at 8. The presentation starts at 9 on the 14th. We're talking a.m.? A.m. Okay. I'm sorry, a.m., yes. Okay. All right. Where can people find this information? They, uh, on the Eventbrite. Okay. Also, so go to eventbrite.com. And, and we have a yeah. Facebook page too. Oh, what is it's, that? Um, um, help stop human trafficking, Oshkosh. Help stop human trafficking, Oshkosh. So go to Facebook, help stop trafficking, Oshkosh, and that will lead you there. All right. Final thoughts from either of you. Thank you, and yes. thank you for your for your ongoing su support oh, to educate uh, people about trafficking. Really, well, of Cheryl, course. thank you. And like I said, I mean, and that was no lie. I mean, every time someone comes on here talking about trafficking, I do find out something more, you know. And and I think that's incumbent upon all of us who care about what's going on in our society is to try to educate ourselves more as much as we can. So. Right. But thank you both for doing what you do, um, and thank you for adopting a couple of kids and for being a foster mom for so many years. That's yep. fantastic. And that's going to do it. Um, I just want to mention, if you have a few hours a month, and by few I mean three to four hours a month, and you'd like to help us out here on Ayan Oshkosh, you don't need any training. We will take care of that for you. And uh, you just can email me at the address that you see on your screen right now. It's ayanoshkosh at gmail.com. Email.com. Email me. Let me know you're interested. We'll get you trained and we'll get you started. You'll learn a lot. Uh, my crew can tell you that. So you'll learn a lot. You'll have a lot of fun and we could sure use the help. So thank you again to my guests and, and to Pastor Connie from earlier in this evening's show. Uh, thanks to my crew as always. And most of all, thanks to you. We will see you next time. Until then, take care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.